Hey everyone, welcome to Team Giraffe Super League. I'm Eric Froelich and I'm joined by another member of the Olive Garden Alliance and Ben Stark. <laughs> ben, how's it going? Good, good, although I haven't had any breadsticks in a while. Yeah, I mean, we need Paulo to, to come into town and force us all to go to Olive Garden with no other choices available. He's got those coupons for the free breadsticks. Wow, I'm just finding out about this? Yeah, yeah, that's our sponsorship deal. We get free breadsticks once a month. Do you have to buy a pasta and you get unlimited breadsticks and salad bar, unlike anyone else who shows up at Olive Garden? <laughs> I think that's how it works. So right. uh, what are we doing here this weekend? Or right this, well, this week day, anyway. In, in Vegas, it's Tuesday. I don't know what planet you're currently <laughs> on, but uh, <laughs> that is a weekday. And I believe we're going to watch two pretty great teams engage in what I like to call team draft. And it's a pretty good format. I know, I know you're new to it, so um, if you're like Ben – and you need to know, get a little refresher on what team draft actually is. It's a three-on-three -three competition. You sit alternating teammates, and you booster draft. So it's a little bit different than regular booster draft in that you are actively trying to make sure the people around you do not have good decks. In normal booster draft, you'll be looking to cooperate. You know, If your deck is great, you know, you're looking to 3 out the pod. That's great. It doesn't really matter if the person on your left goes 2-1. But... In team draft, it does matter what the person on your left does because uh, they're going to be playing against you and your teammates every round. And so uh, we see a lot more hate drafting. We see a, a lot weaker decks. They have only six people in the draft as opposed to eight. And we're not going to see some uncooperative strategies. So team draft is really exciting. Right. It's a big difference because the thing about normal draft, you don't even play against uh, four of the people in your pod. So when you're passing decks, you're just not that worried. And uh, the other three matches that you do play... You're only playing against each person once, so if you pass a really good deck, even if you play them, that deck is effectively only in play against you in one of the three rounds. In Team Draft, every single match counts the same, and they all count for you because you win and lose as a team. So anytime you pass a card to uh, an opponent that's better than the card you get for yourself, you've effectively hurt your team's chances at winning. So that, mean, that doesn't mean hate every pick because you don't know exactly what the people you're passing to are playing, but it does mean you really want to manage the draft, manage the decks around you, and make sure you're consistently taking better cards than you're passing. Right. We're going to have, of course, Ben is one of the premier team drafters in the world. And you'll hear commonly, as he calls the draft, you know, comparing the value of various cards for your deck versus what you expect the opponent to get. So, you know, you might open a pack where you're blue-white and there's a card for you that Ben will describe as being a 7. And you'll be passing a card to your opponent that he might describe as being a 9 or 10. And in those instances, you're going to often take, you know, the 9 or 10 from your opponent when you're confident they're going to play it because that disparity is going to be so large. And so you, you'll see a lot of things like that where you would never do that in just an 8-man booster draft. You'd be looking to take the card to solidify your deck, take the card that's for sure going to make the cut. But in this one, you know, taking a good card from your opponent when you're getting a replacement level card or even better, you know, you're getting a, a reasonably good card, but you're taking a great card from them. You're, you're going to see a lot more of that because... You know, you don't see people beat glory bringers very often, so giving them to your opponent is not a winning strategy more often than not. Right, and one of the main skills in team draft is how accurately you're able to read the draft. Because, for example, let's say I'm passing to you in this draft, Eric, and I'm blue white and you're black red. Now, if I open a busted green rare, if I hate it, that means you get to draft a card for your deck. If I pass it to you, that means you have to either pass it to one of my teammates or hate draft it. So I accomplish, I create a lot of value for our team if I pass that green rare to you. On the other hand, let's say you're green black. If I pass that green rare to you, as you just talked about, now I hurt our whole team because that green rare is in play in three matches, all of which count for, for uh, my team to win. So whereas in normal draft, you read the draft a little pack, pick, uh, pack one to figure out what's open and give yourself the best chance you can. But after that, you really aren't concerned with what anybody else is drafting. Once you're solidified in your colors, because you're not very likely to play against any given person, and even if you play them, you only play them once, like in the three rounds, you'll just pass whatever. In regular draft, I frequently take a card I would describe as a five over a 10 in pack three. I just don't care. Like in team draft, if I open a 10 and I hate draft it and you couldn't have played it, that's a really bad hate draft. If you could have played it, that's a really good hate draft. So team draft ends up being a lot more challenging, a lot more skill rewarding, and your picks just matter a lot more in terms of creating value for your whole team with every pick you make. Right. So 
we're lucky enough, you know, it's semifinals here in Team Draft Super League. Of course, we started with eight great teams, but uh, we got two of the very best in the world. Um, you know, on one side, we've got the Peach Garden Oath. We've got, you know, Hall of Famer William Huey Jensen. We've got Hall of Famer Owen Turtenwald. We've got Reed Duke, who will be a Hall of Famer. I, mean, I was going to say, team, we could call him future Hall of Fame for Reed Duke at this point. <laughs> right. I mean, what this team has done is obviously, you know, they're, they're second to none. I mean, they put up incredible results. They're incredibly consistent. All three are competing in the world championships. And, you know, a couple months in Boston, like, this is the team to beat in any team event. Ben agrees. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. No, I mean, <laughs> I thought I thought maybe we were going to go look at Madison, then I would talk about them or something. But uh, yeah, of course I agree. There's not really a debate. I mean, they're amazing. They've been the most successful team in the modern era of teams ever. I mean, no question, number one. But uh, I mean, you know, the, part of it is they've been together the entire time, so they've had lots and lots of success. Like this other team, uh, Madison with uh, Sam Black, Justin Cota, Matt Severa, they've also been incredibly successful. And they've actually even rotated. You know, I know, uh, I think Justin and Matt might have won a GP with Atron. And then they went and won one with Sam. I think they've also got another top four. You know, th- right. a, lot of the, a lot of these great teams who know what they're doing in team draft and are three great players have, have uh, had a lot of success in the team GPs over the past few years. Yeah, I mean, the fact that these are two of the best teams in the world kind of goes to what working with the same group of people can kind of do for you. I mean, the PGO has been together now for many years, played every team event together. And, I mean, Justin and Sam live in the same house, which is in the same city as Matt Severa and many other great Magic players. So getting to work together with so many good players on a consistent basis, you know, it, it just really helps bring everyone's game to the next level. I know that, you know, Owen, Huey, and Reed would all say that getting to work with each of the other two has made them the players that they are today. And so, you know, of course, all great players and all had success, you know, before teaming together. But being able to work together and being able to share ideas together and just become better Magic players together is, uh, yeah, it's tough to beat. That is that is a, a good way to go about becoming the best in the world. You know, it's funny. Before you said that, I didn't even think about it. Huey and Owen live in the same house, and uh, so does Sam and Justin. So uh, maybe the secret to team success is rooming with your teammates. Yeah. I mean, apparently it hasn't hurt. I've never heard of anyone <laughs> living with another Magic player and not doing incredibly well in, in team tournaments. So, uh, yeah, this, this is apparently the strategy to go with. So uh, I guess Paula will be moving in with you at some point in the near future, and we are good to go. <laughs> yeah. Um, first, he's got to figure out how he's able to move to the U.S., like uh, – be able to play all the Grand Prix and stuff and uh, not have to fly from South America. For Sometimes I forget you live in the U.S. being it's the weekend wherever you are. <laughs> Just got back from a long weekend. Give me a break. Um, I'm this, used is, to com- this is part I'm, of my job. I'm used to commentating on the weekend. It's pretty rare that uh, you're here midweek uh, co- commentating a draft. But this is actually super awesome. I mean, last week's GP was historic, but now we have, you know, two of like we were saying two of the top teams in the world playing my favorite format team draft and though commentating that standard grand prix was awesome i gotta be honest i'm a lot more excited about watching uh reed duke do this team draft yeah for sure i mean we're, we're gonna have a few things to say i'm gonna i'm gonna try to let you handle most of the expert commentary and i'll try a little bit to reel you in instead of us both going on tangents about what we think about team draft but uh we, we definitely have a lot of opinions, and, and these are definitely some of the best players in the world that we're going to get to watch. Yeah, and I mean, you know, draft is complicated. Like, sometimes you don't agree on the card value, but you agree on the strategy. Sometimes you don't agree on the team draft strategy, but you, but you, you know, you do agree on or have similar card evaluations. I know the last time when we covered uh, Reed, you know, uh, he didn't do a lot of hate drafting, but he did, he did take a few cards. Most of the picks I disagreed with, in retrospect, I think I might have even been wrong about because they were Cartouche and Splendid Agony, and I probably wasn't valuing Cartouche quite high enough. Now, the team draft strategy, for example, when we we saw him pass like a black broken rare, when he was probably uh, passing to a black player, I think never return, that that, uh, I felt a lot more confident in because, of course, you don't want to pass a card like never return to a black player. I'm sure that, you know, Reed and, uh, you know, PGO and all of Pantheon you know, they have a lot of opinions on this format and that their opinions may differ from ours. You and I work together for the Pro Tours this year. So, you know, we're pretty much on the same page with our. We don't agree on everything, but, you know, we kind of discussed all our strategy and came to conclusions. And, you know, Pantheon and PGO is going to have done the same thing. 
So one thing that I want to keep my eye on is where their opinions on our differ from maybe ours. And then the other one is going to be to navigating the interesting team draft strategy to try and uh, just, you know, give to the viewers, hey, this is what you've passed. This is what the person you're passing likely is based on that. This is what I think you should do here. Yeah, we are also in a, I mean, not everyone obviously agrees on pick order and card evaluations, but we are deep enough into these formats now where we're not going to be wildly off. Like, I mean, yes, we could be wrong, but I feel like you're, card evaluations are going to be much similar to reads than they would have been early on the format. But we'll find out right now because it looks like the draft is ready to go. And let's take you down to watch Reed Duke doing some team drafting. <laughs> 